Welcome to a Legendarium special about John Wilkins' 1648 moon mission. In this episode, we will learn about a 17th century scientist who wanted to fly a chariot to the moon. In 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit the Earth. Eight years later, the United States Apollo 11 moon mission placed the first man on the surface of the moon. However, these two nations hardly ranked as the first to think of the stars and ponder the possibility of space travel. In 17th century England, a man of science first proposed a manned moon mission. The 1600s filled with natural and technological discoveries. Microscopes revealed cells. Galileo studied the stars using the newly improved telescope, and empirical evidence began to replace religious doctrine. John Wilkins was born into this exciting time in the year 1614 to goldsmith Walter Wilkins and Jane Dodd, a descendant of Northampton Gentry. Educated at Magdalene Hall in Oxford University, young Wilkins studied mathematics and became an ordained priest of the Church of England. Despite being a churchman, Wilkins argued for the separation of science and scripture in his 1640 book A Discourse Concerning a New Planet. While a devout Christian, Wilkins noted that the scientific discoveries of the last century could not be easily explained by the Bible. Reflecting the thought of the time, Wilkins also argued in his 1640 book that the moon must be made of stone with an atmosphere of its own and be a planet in its own right. To back up claims that ultimately proved incorrect, Wilkins noted that the earth and moon seemed to have similar their features when observed through a telescope, most notably mountains, and charts at the time also referred to the moon's craters as oceans. The book also includes a chapter dedicated to exploring the challenges and practical mechanics of making a journey to the moon. Wilkins anticipated and sought to overcome many challenges when planning his space and moon program. First, the force holding earthly objects to the ground, then called Aristotle's gravitas, must be overcome. Wilkins thought gravity to be like magnetism. Building on the work of another scientist named William Gilbert, Wilkins wrote that the strength of attraction between two objects weakened across distance, just like magnets. In his thinking, one needed only to escape the range of Earth's attraction, and it would be smooth sailing from there on. Using geometry and trigonometry, Wilkins argued that the Earth's attraction ended about 20 miles above the surface of the planet. It was common knowledge that temperatures dropped fast as one went higher up a mountain and that the air became thinner. In space, Wilkins knew this air could become so thin that a person might struggle to breathe. And despite having argued against mixing faith and science, Wilkins turned to the Bible to address this problem. He argued that mountain peaks froze because they lay closer to the clouds, which God created before the sun, and are therefore cold. As for air, Wilkins reasoned that the air became thinner as one pulled further away from the world of men, which polluted the air with sin. Men could adapt to breathing the cleaner air made clean by its closeness to God and distance from wicked men. Wilkins believed that both issues would simply resolve themselves beyond the 20-mile line. Could this have been based on the best scientific knowledge available at the time, or on wishful thinking? Regardless, eight years after this first writing, Wilkins wrote a 1648 book called Mathematical Magic. 
In its pages, he published a series of designs for wondrous machines, including a flying chariot. Wilkins hoped this device could carry men to the moon. He updated and improved an earlier design made by a man named Stevan. Wilkins wrote of an open-wheeled chariot with a vertical rotating sail sprouting from the backrest. If this chariot could lift a few men, they could pop on over to the moon, where they would glide to a landing on the same wheels that gave them their start. In order to get the chariot going, Wilkins planned on carrying along a charge of gunpowder which would literally blast his flying chariot into space. If Wilkins ever carried out these experiments, they almost certainly ended in failure, and he did not publish them. Future experiments show the limits of gears, wheels, springs, and torque in traveling through empty space. Yet despite his flying chariot not taking flight, John Wilkins proved an accomplished man. He served in many high-ranking positions, both in academics and in his nation's church. In 1644, he became chaplain to Charles Lewis, at the time the Prince Elector of the Palatine. Four years later, he went on to become the warden of Wadham College in Oxford University, his alma mater. At the Wadham Gardens, Wilkins laid out mechanical devices like a talking statue, a rainbow maker, and glass beehives used to study bee colonies. There he likely also experimented with his flying machines. Later, Wilkins founded the Royal Society of London for Improving Natural Knowledge in 1660. During his time there, Wilkins came up with other lofty and fantastic ideas like creating a universal language and a cipher and signal system allowing for long-distance communication, similar to modern telephony or even the internet. A century later, some of Wilkins' passions became the butt of jokes. In a 1784 letter, historian Horace Walpole wrote, I discovered an alliance between Bishop Wilkins' art of flying and his plan of universal language, the latter of which he no doubt calculated to prevent the want of an interpreter when he should arrive at the moon. For all his errors, Wilkins advanced research in astronomy and science. Some of his extravagant ideas, like spaceflight and long-distance communication, did come to fruition, though centuries later than he hoped. This is a reminder that even though some ideas might seem far-fetched or even ridiculous, they can in time inspire something real and really important. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.